I'm Jonathan Groff, and you're watching the Broadway.com show, whether you like it or not. Welcome to the Broadway.com show, your weekly guide to everything happening on the Great White Way, or as we like to think of it, the headquarters of the Norm Lewis and Sierra Bogues fan club. Let's get started with the news. What's the buzz, Ryan? We're over the moon that Hugh Jackman is hosting the Tony Awards for a third time next month, but fans of his stage work won't have to wait long to see him on stage again. The Tony winner will return to Broadway this fall in Jez Butterworth's The River, which tells the story of a fisherman in a remote cabin who's visited by two of the women in his life. Directed by Ian Rickson, The River will play this fall at the Circle in the Square Theater beginning in October. So, start practicing your best swooning techniques. Want an inside peek at life backstage at If Then, the hit Broadway musical led by Tony winner Adina Menzel? Look no further. James Snyder, the super talented guy who plays the love of Menzel's life in both storylines, is Broadway.com's newest video blogger. Hey Kid, backstage at If Then will premiere on Thursday, May 15th, with new episodes airing every week. Hey James, if you need any help, your co-stars Jen Kalella and Ryan Redman, former A-plus bloggers themselves, are just a dressing room away. Award season is in full swing, and this week we've got the scoop on the winners of the Outer Critics Circle Awards. A Gentleman's Guide to Love and Murder took the lead with four wins, including Outstanding New Musical. Bullets Over Broadway snagged three trophies, including acting wins for Marin Maisie and Nick Cordero. Other big winners included The Glass Menagerie for Best Revival of a Play, All the Way for Outstanding New Play, and Hedwig and the Angry Inch, which nabbed the award for Outstanding Revival of a Musical. Congratulations to the winners! After a rating success with the Carrie Underwood-led Sound of Music and buzz about the upcoming Peter Pan Live, NBC will continue its living roomification of family-friendly classic musicals with newly announced plans for a live version of The Music Man. Yes, 76 trombones will lead the big parade right into your home sometime next year. Get ready to be charmed by Harold Hill, fall for Mary and the Librarian, and snuggle in with your shapoopy while you watch The Trouble in River City. Frozen duo Robert Lopez and Kristen Anderson Lopez are creating a new musical. Up There is apparently a boy meets girl, boy loses girl, boy gets back girl romance with an overlay of Cirque and is scheduled to open in San Diego next year. No word yet on whether the tuner is Broadway bound, but since Egota Lopez co-created both The Book of Mormon and Avenue Q, we wouldn't be surprised if we're seeing it on The Great White Way sooner rather than later. I'm Mayor Winningham and you're watching the Broadway.com show. Our Tweet of the Week comes from Lady Day star Audra McDonald, who has a public service announcement for a few people that are getting her confused with the voice contestant Audra McLaughlin. Hey Twitter folks that visit this handle, I'm not the singer Audra MC from The Voice, I'm the much older, blacker singer from The Broadway. If you're still having trouble telling the difference, just count their Tony Awards. One has five and one has... oh wait. You can follow the one and only Audra at Audra Equality MC. Our star of the week is the newest leading man in the Phantom of the Opera, Norm Lewis. With his rich voice and sly sense of humor, Lewis has long been a Broadway favorite, and in all the time we've adored him, he's never wavered in proclaiming his ultimate dream role, the Phantom. Well, Norm's dream came true on May 12th, when he took the stage at the Majestic Theater to become the first African-American actor to play the part on Broadway. Not only did he give a stunning performance opposite his former Little Mermaid co-star, Sierra Bogus, he made history. Congratulations, Norm. We're thrilled to crown you Star of the Week. Michael C. Hall, Tony Collette, Marissa Tomei, and Tracy Letts are playing neighbors with an uncommon amount in common in the realistic Joneses on Broadway. I caught up with the stars at Willino's play and asked them to describe the weirdest neighbor they'd ever had. Check out their answers in this week's Pop Poll. I think actually I've usually been the weird neighbor, I think, for most of my uh my, my neighbors, especially growing up. Oh, by far with Milton. Oh, yeah, he, he died, though. He died at his computer. He tried to crash my 40th birthday party, and he was like, can I help you? He wouldn't let him in. I had a, a racist hoarder who lived by me for, for a long time. When I was a teenager, we would sing outside on the stoop, and she would take water and pour it out her window on top of us to stop us from singing. They had remarkably explicit um, everything, yeah, but, but fights in particular. I had some neighbors when I was a little girl who fled their house, and I think they might have been running from the IRS. But I got to take all the herbs out of their garden, so that worked out well for me. 
This week, we're giving a giant thumbs up to news that Fun Home is aiming for a Broadway arrival next spring. After an acclaimed run at the Public Theater, Janine Tesori and Lisa Crone's take on Alison Bechdel's graphic novel was a Pulitzer Prize finalist and has been awarded by the Outer Critics Circle, Lucia Lortel Awards, and New York Drama Critics Circle. We've been championing for this special musical to make the big move for months. Our only demand, pint-sized powerhouse Sidney Lucas must, must, must be on board. So hurry up. Guys, in case you haven't heard, it's award season. But whenever we go on Instagram, instead of seeing pictures of our favorite Broadway stars at glamorous photo shoots and red carpet events, we get a sweaty James Franco with his hand down his pants, Adina Menzel's nostril close-ups, Neil Patrick Harris's fishnet burns, and lots and lots of bruise photos. Enough. We've had enough sweaty selfies for one year, so we're giving this week's thumbs down to gross Instagram photos. Get it together, guys. Come on. I'm Daphne Rubin Vega, and you're watching the Broadway.com show. Tis the season for TV news. The networks are announcing their new seasons left and right, and many Broadway favorites are getting good news about where their next paychecks are coming from. To summarize, here are the top five news bits from the small screen. At number five is CBS's reboot of Neil Simon's The Odd Couple, with Matthew Perry playing sloppy Oscar to comedian Tom Lennon's Neat Nick Felix. Deborah Messing, who impressed many with her Broadway debut in Outside Mullingar in the fall, is at number four. The former Will and Grace and Smash star is heading back to Hollywood as the star of the new Mysteries of Laura on NBC. The number three slot goes to once Tony nominee Krista Milioti, who is certainly the darling of TV land these days, having just finished a run on How I Met Your Mother. Next up, a starring role in the NBC rom-com A to Z. Madam Secretary is at number two. The CBS show about a Secretary of State will feature a flurry of Broadway stars, including Bettina Miller, B.B. Newworth, and Eric Bergen. And at number one is Tony winner Jane Krakowski, who went through the ringer of pilot season, seeing Fox drop her new show Dead Boss, only to rebound with a role in Tina Fey's new comedy, Unbreakable, Kimmy Schmidt. There's no suit quite like the birthday suit, and Neil Patrick Harris is working that one well in this week's Hot Shot. Sporting nothing but a bow tie, a strategically placed top hat, and a smirk, the Hedwig and the Angry Inch star posed for Rolling Stone's newest issue. The Tony nominee worked hard to get into shape to play the titular transsexual German glam rocker, so we can't blame him for wanting to show off a bit. That's a whole lot of NPH, and this is a whole lot of us not minding. In last week's SmackDown, we wanted to know which movie star who got her start on Broadway you want back on the boards, Anna Kendrick or Kristen Bell. The results are in, and Frozen's Kristen Bell came out on top with 63% of the vote. In this week's SmackDown, we're looking at two hunky TV stars who have never been on the Great White Way, Mad Men's John Hamm and Sherlock's Benedict Cumberbatch. Who would you rather see make his Broadway debut? Tweet your vote to at Broadway.com with the hashtag BeWaySmackdown and tune in next week to find out the winner. That's it for another episode of the Broadway.com show. We leave you with one last listen to the stunning score of Bridges of Madison County, which sadly plays its final performance on Broadway this week. See you next time. Now take it away, Stephen Pasquale. It all fades away. It all fades away. It all fades away. But you But you, but you.